Hi, my name is Alex Preek. I am the Chief of uh, the Division of Surgical Oncology and Endocrine Surgery and Professor of Surgery here at the UT Health MD Anderson Mays Cancer Center. My expertise is in the treatment of liver and pancreas cancers, and thank you for joining us today. So what I'd like to talk about is colorectal liver metastases. So colorectal cancer is the most common GI cancer, and the liver is the actual most common site of metastases or spread from the colon to the rectum. And that is um, due to a couple of factors. Number one is that the blood drainage from the colon and the rectum is directly into the liver. So about 25 to 40% of patients at some point during their treatment or diagnosis have liver disease. It can be there at the time of the original diagnosis, what we call synchronous, or later on. So let's say a colorectal cancer was, uh, was treated about three years or four years prior, then it could also come up in the liver years afterward, and that's what we call metachronous. It's important to know that it's often the only side of the spread, and that's because the liver acts as a filter. So the, the tumor cells get filtered into the liver, they can spread in the liver, but also prevents the spread outside for other places like the lung and, the, and uh, other places like, such as that. And in 33 to 50% of patients, again, it's the only side of spread. And that's important because in those patients, it, even when it's spread to the liver and is technically metastatic or stage four disease, curative rates are still very high. So as long as we can get all the tumor out of the liver, it's associated with an excellent cure rate and prognosis long-term. And then again, this is for a stage four disease, which is you know, oftentimes uncommon. So shown here on the graph on the left is uh, patients that have either undergone liver resection, so over time, over 60 months, so five years plus, over half of the patients are alive after successful resection of these of colorectal liver metastases versus patients that don't undergo liver resections of the typically just chemotherapy, only about 20%. Still good, but certainly nothing compared to liver resection. Shown here on the table is studies from the late 90s all the way up to the mid-2000 or mid-2016 and, and beyond about, and again, large numbers couple things. Number one is the safety. So in large high volume institutions such as ours, the chances of what we call mortality or not making it through a liver operation is very low, one to two percent. So very safe. In addition, again, across the board, excellent long-term survival rates. So again, the goal is for patients with liver metastases, can we get them to resection? Can we remove all the tumor? So how do we decide? Well, traditionally, back when I trained um, 20 or so years ago, um, we defined it really about what, how, what kind of disease, were, how many lesions were there. If there were too many, if they were too large, uh, if there was anything outside the liver, we didn't really think patients could successfully be cured. Now, however, because of a lot of advances, some of which we'll talk about, we really define about what stays in, meaning that as long as we can get all the liver out, can we all the lesions be removed at the same time, can we leave enough liver behind? Because we obviously we need enough liver behind to survive. It really doesn't matter how many lesions, it doesn't matter where they are. We have all these different strategies as we'll talk about uh, and complex um, uh, patterns of care uh, to achieve those goals. So how can we increase? So certain patients, they get diagnosed, there's disease in the liver that we can successfully remove up front. Sometimes you give them chemotherapy up front, we go ahead and take those out. We, um, one of the strategies we now use here is what we call parenchymal sparing or liver preserving. In other words, take out the least amount of liver possible in order to get all the tumor out to preserve that liver. Well, sometimes there's just too much tumor or the liver's just not big enough, so then what do we do? Well, one option is to reduce or shrink the number of tumors or the tumor size, and that's typically done with chemotherapy. So patients get chemotherapy that they would get anyway, uh, we've got a lot of advances in chemotherapy agents for colorectal um, disease in the last decade or so, and we shrink and decrease the number of size and then go to surgery. Sometimes that's not in which we'll also go through. So for example here, shown that these are typical CT scans or CAT scans of a patient uh, of mine, uh, and shown here on the left um, is at the time of diagnosis, so large, this dark area here is in the middle of the liver large uh, tumor from colorectal cancer, and 
the white here is the blood supply to the left and the right, and as you can see, it's invaded. So there's just no way to successfully get this out because the blood supply to both sides of the liver would have to be sacrificed. The liver can't live that way. So this patient got six months of chemotherapy, and shown here on the right is our CT scan, same patient. And again, you can see the shrinking of this tumor. A lot of this is dead. And now you can see the blood vessels on the right and the left. So this patient, we can go ahead and remove that right side liver because the blood supply is saved and the, and, and the patient can uh, live long term. So again, that's the use of chemotherapy to shrink the tumor. Well, so again, patients get chemotherapy. Well, now what? How can we increase the size of the remaining liver? How can we boost that size kind of ahead of time? And there's a couple of strategies. So from the days of Prometheus, uh, from Greek mythology, we, even the ancient Greeks knew that the liver is the only organ that they thought could grow back. It really doesn't grow back. But what happens is you can take out a portion of the liver up to about 75, 80% in the normal liver. The rest of the liver, so the 20, 25%, will grow over time to compensate. And so those patients, for example, even if we remove 75 80% of the liver, ultimately they can get 90% of that back on its own. So one of the strategies is, well, can we do that ahead of time? Can we jumpstart the process before we even take patients to the operating room? Can we increase the size of the liver? And that's what we call what we call portal vein embolization, which I'll show you, and also a combination with stage liver resection. So for example, shown here again is a, a patient that already underwent chemotherapy for six months and they're subtle, but you can see this darkened area here is a liver, and it's really not that much, but the location is very central. In other words, if I had to take this patient in the operating room here and have to take out about this much of the liver, there's not really much liver left behind, particularly since this patient got chemotherapy. So what is preoperative portal vein embolization? It's kind of a fancy word for um, increase in the size of the liver left behind, and we consider that in cases when the future liver remnant, which is basically the amount of liver left behind, is too small to tolerate a resection. And we're really the only place here in South Texas that have a program to do this, uh, what we call portal vein embolization. And what we do is we look at, and I'll show you some pictures about the ratio of how much liver we're predicting to let be left behind versus how much liver we're gonna take out or the total liver volume. And then, as I mentioned, in a normal liver, so in a healthy normal liver, we can take out 75 to 80%. So we, you know, we need at least 20, 25%. Sometimes we can't even achieve that. Or um, in patients that what we call fatty liver, and this includes patients that are with obesity, diabetes, and very importantly, chemotherapy. So we know chemotherapy can cause fatty liver. In those patients, because the remaining liver is not super healthy, we actually need at least 30 to 40% of the liver left behind. And in other patients that have cirrhosis, uh, we actually even need more, about 50%. So if you don't have enough of this liver left behind, those are the indications of, again, this jump starting the growth. So how's that done? So here's the CT scan, and, and what we do is we map this. So with our radiologist, we can map the volume of the liver here. So this is the, that patient with the total liver volume shown in blue. Here's kind of a 3D image, and we can calculate that to be about 1.8 liters, 1,800 cc's. And then we say, all right, well, this is the amount of liver that I'm going to leave behind. I'm going to take this out. So what's that volume? So if we just map that, again, with three dimensions, it's 345, so it's only about 19.5%. So if this patient went to the operating right now, we'd remove that, they would have less than 20% of the liver left behind. Again, this patient got chemotherapy, that's not enough. So what we do is what we call right portal vein embolization. So how is this done? Again, this is what done with our interventional radiology colleagues. They put a catheter, almost like a liver biopsy, numb patients up, put them, uh, make them sleepy like a liver biopsy, they put a catheter here, and shown here is the normal blood supply. To the right looks like a tree, and also to the left. And then what happens is we actually, they actually put coils in. They put coils in to block the blood supply to the right side in this case. And what that does is it starves the right side of the liver. The side that's going to come out, all the blood flow is diverted to the left. So all the nutrition, everything you're eating that goes into this, what we call the portal vein, all gets shunted to the left, the side that's staying behind to then increase that growth and then starve and shrink the right. And amazingly, patients don't feel that, meaning that as that liver is being starved, you don't feel pain, you, have, you can live a normal life, you still have your full energy, but because it's over time. 
And then shown here is after we put those coils and you can see now only the left side has the liver versus here. The right side here is actually knocked out. So there's no blood supply going to the, to the right side. And so this is about four weeks after. So um, these are the coils here and you can see you know, that this is now the part left behind, much larger. I mean, this is the majority actually now, instead of taking all I'm gonna, all I'd have to do is take out this much, all this liver now is grown and is left behind. And so this is really close to 60% of the liver left behind as opposed to 20%. So this is one of the strategies we use. Well, the other thing we run into is if patients have disease on both sides of the liver. And again, traditionally, 20 years ago or so, um, if patients had disease on both sides, we really didn't consider the thumb resection. That's changed. We can be very aggressive uh, with patients. Again, all these patients get chemotherapy to shrink as much as we can. If we still have liver left, if we still have disease on both sides, how are we going to do that? So this patient, we'd have to take out portion here, portion here. We'd only have to leave the liver, a little bit of liver left here. So what we can do is we could do it stage, meaning that we take out the little part first let this part recover and grow, and then we go back and we take out the other side, oftentimes with chemotherapy. This is also important because as we mentioned, um, with this portal vein embolization, if this patient, if we're gonna knock the blood supply out to this right side and then give more flow and nutrients to the left, that, that tumor's gonna get all that and the tumor's gonna grow. We don't want that, so we have to take that out first, then we do that, and then we come back. And so, for example, this is kind of putting it all together, kind of all the things in our, in our armamentarium here at Mays Cancer Center. Uh, this patient underwent a stage resection, took out the lesion on the left. They then underwent that embolization, starving the disease on the right or the liver on the right. During that time, chemotherapy was given for about six months. So again, while the liver is growing on the left, any disease left behind is being killed by the chemotherapy. The liver volume went from about 20% up to 35%, which is enough. And then the patient then underwent successful right liver resection. Uh, and again, certain strategies we have. So I hope you got some taste of the different innovative strategies that are new to San Antonio and unique uh, to uh, South Texas here at Mays Cancer Center. Uh, and again, we, um, I want to join all of our patients, all of our caregivers. Uh, this is a team of medical oncologists, surgeons, radiation pathologists, everyone together working to uh, fight cancer and hopefully, uh, as the MD Anderson Cancer Sign has, hopefully eradicate cancer long term. Thank you.